Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my vegetable garden. I live in Spokane, Washington, which is about 300 miles east of Seattle. We are almost to the Idaho border. Now most of Spokane is in hardiness zone 6, but we garden in a microclimate, so it's hardiness zone 5B here. So what's on tap for today? Well, it is very hot here. We're into the triple digits. And what I wanted to share with you today are some tips for helping our vegetable plants get through this kind of heat. You've probably noticed our garden looks a little different this time, and that's because Bill and I have been putting shade cloth over certain types of vegetable crops that we want to protect from the heat. In this case, tomatoes. So what we have done is we've taken a 50% shade cloth and gone up and over the two beds here and attached it to the top of the squash arbor. And that's really nice because when you're using a shade cloth, you do not want to just go right around the plants because then that traps the heat around them. They don't appreciate that. So instead, it's more important to suspend shade cloth, and that way you've got some airflow in there, and you're giving them protection from the intensity of the sunlight, but keeping that air moving around them so they don't get too hot. Now this is my other tomato bed that has the two slicing tomatoes, which are Mortgage Lifter and Chef's Choice Orange, underneath. And this was trickier to do because we didn't really have anything to suspend it from. And so what Bill did is he tied on two sticks, one on each end of the bed, and then we put on a shade cloth. And so it still gets air circulation down here but some protection from the intensity of the sunlight up here. So I think that's going to work. I also put a small piece of shade cloth over the bed that contains the beets and Swiss chard to give them a little protection. You'll notice it doesn't go all the way to the ends of the bed, so we are getting some air circulation. This is one of the beds that has the agricultural insect netting on it. It still gets good airflow in there, but I'm hoping that that little bit of shade cloth will give those poor plants a break. I've done the same with the other bed that has the hinged cover on it and also has the agricultural insect netting. I had a small piece of shade cloth that is covering some new cabbage seedlings that I planted a week ago. Another thing I'm doing is adding more grass mulch to the surface of the soil in each bed. And what happens when you mulch a bed is it helps the soil retain its moisture better. And a bonus is that it impedes weed growth. I love that. But I want to help these beds stay moist. While I'm on the subject of moisture, I wanted to mention that now our drip irrigation system is running 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon. We need to help these plants get through it. And if they're not stressed for water, that is a huge step in their favor. Before, we were watering 10 minutes in the morning and five minutes in the afternoon, just so you know. There's another thing that I'm doing to baby our tomatoes, and that is I'm giving some extra water to the soil. Not to the leaves, I don't want to do that, which also can facilitate the movement of disease. We don't want that. But the reason I'm doing this is because I want to prevent blossom end rot. You've probably heard about blossom end rot before, or maybe you've never heard about it, so I wanted to explain very briefly what it is. And I do have a detailed video on blossom end rot on my YouTube channel, so just do a search for those words and you'll find it, and it should be very helpful. It is such a misunderstood disorder. It's not a disease, but for the fruits on tomato plants, 
and squash plants and eggplants and so on. To develop normally, they need calcium. Calcium is down in the soil. Most garden soils have plenty of it on hand. But if the soil is not lightly moist, it makes it very difficult for the roots to transport calcium up into the plants, which will go to the fruits, and then they develop normally. They don't get that dark brown, sort of rotten end on the end of the fruit. So the secret is to keep the soil lightly moist. I'm going to harp on this, but it is so important that you do that. Your soil probably has plenty of calcium, but if you don't water consistently, then the roots can't get at that calcium and move it into the plant. So it's as simple as that. Just give them some extra water, water them regularly, and you should be good. Let's talk about peppers. As most of you probably know, Bill loves to grow peppers and he's growing the majority of his crop inside our little hoop house. But we're doing something differently this year and it's looking very promising. Colorado State University and the University of Georgia have been studying the use of shade cloth suspended over peppers to decrease the instances of sun scald and heat stress. Colorado State University found that a 30% shade cloth is beneficial. It needs to be supported on hoops or a structure rather than lying right on the plants as I explained earlier. Now Bill's growing most of his peppers in this hoop house and we didn't have a huge amount of shade cloth to cover the hoop house so he placed floating row cover on the outside and it provides about 20% shading. So far the plants are looking great and I think they appreciate less intense light coming through the plastic of the hoop house. Now whether you're growing vegetables or flowers in containers, remember that those containers dry out much more quickly than in-ground plantings. So increase your watering time, poke your finger into the potting soil, and make sure that it's not dry. It should be lightly moist and the plants will thank you for it. Phew, it's hot. I need to get inside. So the very most important thing you need to remember is to take good care of yourself. Wear a sun hat, wear sunscreen, drink plenty of water, and work outside early in the morning before it gets super hot or late in the day, maybe after dinner, just to keep cool. I know we all stress over our veggies, and rightly so, but you're the most important part of the picture. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'll see you next week and stay cool.